<laughs> well, I'm going to warn you, we got a fighter here. Uh, this man has been literally fighting for his life for two years. Oh. Two years, the journey? Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, six weeks ago, surgery for a fourth tumor. They just keep popping up like a no bee more. in the blueberries. No more. Amen. <laughs> Val, um, just before we came to air, Val said we're going to lead a Delta Force to rescue the family. Here's, here's exactly what Val said, that he believes the church needs to help fathers and mothers reverse the moral decline and the deconstruction of our Christian and family values. What a great cause. Pastor for 16 years at Burlington, mm -hmm. Burl, Burl Oak, Oak Christian Burl Fellowship. Oak Christian Fellowship. Yeah. Uh, you worked here at Crossroads in several capacities for 14 years. 14, did we yeah. add them up? Because they came in chapters. <laughs> Val, you're just so precious to us. And we're thrilled to see, number one, how great you're looking. H how are you? Well, I, I stand here by God's grace today. That's all I can say. Because, uh, you know, you go through these major surgeries. I mean, the first surgery was a huge one. Lost 40 square inches of my abdomen uh, in tumors. And then hearts, and then shoulder, and then other ones. But, you know... The interesting thing, I mean, I love divine, and David's praying for divine healing later on, and, and I want to emphasize that we do believe in divine present healing, and David will be reading scriptures, so we want you to relax where you're in the hospital room or wherever you are, take note of that. But when I was in the hospital, God said to me, you are my ambassador here. And when I say God said to me, I want to say this, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. So the voice of God for those of us who love God and want to walk according to his ways. So the Lord spoke to my heart and said, you're my ambassador here. Bring light wherever you go. And it gave me opportunities to pray in the hospital and pray with doctors and pray with nurses and, and all of that. I mean, I'm on a gurney in the middle of an operation and I go, I'd like to pray, please. These <laughs> Irish eyes are always <laughs> smiling. That's my testimony. And, and, and they're, the, they're the thing. So, you know, and the doctors love it. I mean, when you pray for them and minister to them, that's great. So anyway, that's my health story. I'm on the way to recovery. I'm walking in, in faith in God. And you are on some kind of mission. And I won't leave this earth until God says so. Absolutely. And neither will David Baines. He's written in your days Amen. in his book. Ab absolutely. I, actually, I love what John Bevere says. He says, there's absolutely no man, woman, child, or devil who can get you out of the will of God. Absolutely. We can get ourselves out, so we got to keep... But in the midst of darkness, as Paul and Joseph and all of the others, in the biblical characters, when we go back into scriptures, we learn that even in their darkest moments, God was at work even when we don't think he's at work. Mm -hmm. And God's been at work in my life, even though there were days when I go lying down, I go, oh, you know, God, help me. And God began to speak to me about the Family Blessing Initiative. I'm, I'm your student <laughs> and everybody watching, so talk to so us. When, when it, that, that was a nudge from God, a word into my heart. I saw these letters, FBI, and I'm going, what's FBI? You know, the smoking. And you're, you're waking up and sleeping and all of those things. But you're, you're, God's there, and the Holy Spirit's there speaking. And uh, the Lord said, Family Blessing Initiative. FBI. FBI. <laughs> and the, you know, the mind goes, Secret Service? What's this? But anyway, the uh, secret's out. The secret's out. So God began to impress on my heart a variety of different ways how he wanted me to uh, minister to families and set out a clarion call to families and be a watchman for families. So we can strengthen that core strengthen. unit. I am all for the family church. Mm -hmm. I, I, or I mean the church, the, the local church. I was a pastor for 16 years. I love the local church. But we need to engage in the as it says in First Peter chapter 2, 5 and 9, it says that um, there is a, a priesthood of believers, mm -hmm. a priesthood of believers. And we want to engage that, that priesthood role. So Can that's we where we Can we start by looking at the scriptures that actually have become the foundation? Yeah, Let, let's roll that if we have those scriptures up. Deuteronomy was, was the one that, that the Lord, today I give you these commandments to be on your hearts, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home. Write them on the door frames of your houses and your gates. Deuteronomy, and I'm sort of cut a little bit out there so that for time. 
But yeah, and I was saying, well, do you want the door frames thing? And how does that? Well, apply? David Maines and I talked last October, and you might remember this at breakfast. And David said, now the door frames of our homes now are the internet, and and so all of a sudden I'm creatively thinking door frames, homes, internet. Facebooks, you know, all of that. So they're going the right way in, in the youth, getting out all this message. They're so messaging. We're, we're, we're sort of dovetailing here in, in one way, and, and I'm called to surround this whole essence uh, with the presence of God. So Let's in the look prayer. at the next scripture. Next one was, it's a very sad scripture. It says, after Joshua was gathered to his ancestors, our ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. So there are generations growing up who know neither God, nor the things of God, nor what God has done. So it's up to us to keep telling the story, yes. keep bringing the stories out. So God spoke to my heart in, in developing the Nehemiah project, which is 52 day prayer. And Nehemiah restored Jerusalem, the walls around Jerusalem, because they were broken, he was broken hearted. It says uh, he saw the people in great trouble. The walls were broken, the gates were burnt with fire. And all of a sudden, he said, I need to go and help these people. And that's my cry. I need to go and help. How do we help in this day and age? So he cried out to God and said, God, how can I do this? So the Lord said, establish a kit, a prayer kit, 52 days of prayer, a plaque for their homes. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. Anointing oil. And we need to reclaim our homes from the devastation that's happening with the media, with the pornography you mentioned earlier on, with the vampirism, with the Twilight series, with all of the occult and paranormal and supernatural stuff that's invading our homes. God says, I want to be the supernatural presence in homes. Beautiful. And the restoration that we're asking for is that people would take it. So here's what happened to me yesterday morning. I'm walking the roads and I know we're, we're running down on time. I said, God, I need a strategy for this. And the Lord gave me out of Nehemiah, the 52 days, said, I will restore the homes as the walls of Jerusalem were restored in 52 days. If people take on this project of prayer and, and praying for their homes in 52 days, I'll restore the families, I'll restore the walls. Mm -hmm. So yesterday I was walking the roads up around Orangeville, Singing Waters, where I live now. And uh, Lord gave me three things, homeland security. <laughs> and I don't know whether we have that up there or not, but the, the, we put it out. Moms and dads in their homes, uh, single parents, there we go, single parents, people on their own or with their friends, surrounding their homes with prayer, surrounding their families with prayer, praying for them. The legacy security, the legacy is this, and David and I talked about legacy. How, how does legacy extend? Well, the grandparents surrounding their families with prayer. Joe Briscoe legacy. said the gifts and the spirit don't age. Amen. That so we is better exactly keep them right. engaged. And then the cyber security, and this was the one that intrigued me as David was talking about the, the, the walls and the homes and the internet and all that. Empty nesters creating Facebook pages with their families and email pages, etc. Now we're doing test mm. groups and you'll get my email there. You can, we need about 20 more families. We're doing a test group. Uh, on families okay. and uh, we have now about 20 families that we're going to test with and probably another 20 will do it and we'll have a 40 group uh, yeah, and you can get my email there and, and send in a word but here's here's what one of the ladies who's there a lady now who's doing the uh, the uh, Facebook page sending it out to her family and even unbelievers are saying can I get in on this can I get in on this prayer so I want to read the proclamation of a prayer that we're doing Deuteronomy 440, it says this. Keep his decrees and his commands, which I am giving you today, so that it may go well with you and your children, uh, your children after you, that you may live long in the land, and the Lord your God will give you all the time. So that will be the scripture reference. See, we're doing three parts, the promise, the prayer, and the proclamation. Dear Lord, sometimes we feel totally inadequate to measure up to your standards. Thank you for your mercy and your grace, the way you teach us so patiently. Please strengthen us to do your will more closely, because when we do things your way, things just work out so much better in Jesus' name. Then the proclamation over our family. In the name of Jesus, I speak righteousness over every member of my family. You promised, Lord, that your word would not return to us void, so I speak fullness and life into every scripture that we have ever read, heard, or spoken in their whole lives. Pray it 
with, uh, that it will bear fruit. I declare them free of all generational hindrances that would keep them from walking in faith and fullness of your Holy Spirit. I speak the blessings of the Lord over them and through the authority given to me in Jesus Christ, I break off all the effects of trauma, shock and disappointment in their lives so they can walk in liberty, freedom, strength and happiness. I speak your wisdom and success over them. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. So we proclaim this over our families. We make the promise of God. We speak back to God in a prayer and then we make the proclamation. So we're doing this 52 days and I've got a great writer now. Uh, Diane Rowland Lee is helping me ah, write great. and she's well known here. So I, I'm thankful for that. God gives us the gifts and gives people the gifts to be able to scribe and, and work all of this together. Val, this is fantastic. Amen. And there are people, this is the kind of powerful prayer we need in a culture that is in distress. Mm -hmm. uh, people are gonna wanna connect with you okay. to find out more. Websites up there. Up there, and the Family Blessing Initiative for mm -hmm. those who are in this area, December 1st at Singing Waters right. in Orangeville. Anybody can come? Well, we've got about 100 seats. There's about 20 or 30 gone already. So those who want to get don't, in, don't email delay. me. They need to email me and let me know that they're coming so that we can arrange lunch. It's, it's free, but there will be an offering taken for lunch and, and different things like that. Wow, I love yeah. all this good stuff going on. <laughs> and let's pray for Val and Brenda you, as uh, they lead the charge. Talk about a battle strategy. Bless you, Amen. Val.